I'm back again with the GTN show and in today's show I thought it's about time I share some of my money saving triathlon tips with you including some that I'm fairly sure you won't have thought of before. I'm also going to be talking about some rather sad news and some controversy within the Korean Triathlon Federation. An athlete that has broken Usain Bolt's 200 meter world record and some of our viewers that had a rather unique experience with a baby seal whilst out swimming. Okay then, everyone loves a little money saving advice, particularly if you're new to the sport, you might be a little overwhelmed by how much gear we need for the sport of triathlon, how much it will cost, how much races cost to enter when we can finally race. So I thought I'd step in today, I've got loads of experience within triathlon, having bought a lot of kit over the years and some tactics in how to save some money. So I thought I'd share some of that with you today. So first one might surprise you a little bit, and this is to join a triathlon club if you can join one locally to you. Now, I know this one sounds a little bit odd because actually this is gonna cost you money initially, whether that's monthly or annually, but I can almost guarantee that that cost will be outweighed by some of the benefits that you'll experience because the triathlon community is absolutely amazing. As I experienced firsthand when I first joined a triathlon club and started triathlon because I was lent kit, I was actually passed down some kit from some of those experienced triathletes in the club. I was passed on knowledge and experience from them. So that in turn actually saved me money in training and in races by not making some of those mistakes that they'd made. I also was actually able to buy some of the kit from them. So I was able to get some really big, good bargains from some of them on bikes, wetsuits, you name it. And then we've got things like when we go to races, you're able to share transport and save some money in that way, also with accommodation and so on. I mean, the benefits are endless. So I would fully recommend joining a triathlon club. Next one, relatively obvious tip, but is to look after your kit. And that goes for everything, your cycling kit, your bike, your helmet, even down to your goggles. Obviously accidents do happen, but being reckless and maybe even just losing your kit, well, that can really start to add up. So this actually comes down to not just how you use your kit, but also how you care for it and store it after having used it. So when you finish your bike, clean it down, dry it down before storing it away. Make sure your shoes are well dried out. Sports kit, wash that on a low heat because having it on too high heat will wear it out very quickly. Wetsuits, make sure they're dried out and you roll them away preferably or hang them up rather than folding it up and therefore putting creases in it. You kind of get the picture, just make sure you look after your kit because that can really start to add up having to replace that all the time. No one, this might divide opinion, but it's don't go cheap. Now, I'm talking from experience here, having actually bought some rather cheap kit in the past and, well, had some issues with it. Now, you know those deals that just seem too good to be true? Well, quite often they are, and that is reflected in the quality. So what I've experienced is I've bought some of this kit. It hasn't lived up to the task that it should be able to do. I've gone through numerous bits of kit before finally buying that slightly more expensive bit of kit, and that worked. So. In turn, I'd spent a lot of money along the way when I could have just gone for that final product. So that's normally, I'd normally suggest going for that slightly more expensive kit, obviously within reason. You can, of course, look out for some deals on that better kit. You get the picture. Um, another one, look after your body. It is amazing how much physio appointments can be or can add up to being. And that's not to say don't ever use a physio because they are fantastic, they have a place, but if you find yourself plagued with a niggle or injury and find yourself having to go to a physio, it can really start to add up. Um, so what I'd say is just try and keep on top of your body health and its performance and functionalities. So that means keeping on top of your day-to-day -day stuff. So making sure that your foam rollering, stretching after exercises and conditioning your body. And that will hopefully keep you away from the physio and actually ultimately a better athlete in the long run. Um, also fueling. As triathletes, we tend to have a much larger appetite than some of our non-triathlon friends and that does mean our food bill can really mount up as well. So something I do, and I'm sure many of you do already, is actually just plan ahead with my meals. So when I'm cooking a big meal, I'll try and maybe cook a little bit more 
and that will be able to be used for my lunches perhaps the next days or dinner perhaps the next day. Um, also, you can be a little bit creative. So with the, your energy bars or energy gels that you might use on training rides, you could perhaps create some of them. So make your own granola bars and we've got some over on our channel that Heather's made before. Yeah, create some and it also just feels quite good making something yourself and going out and using that in some of your training. Also, if you do your research, you can find some bargains online, as I mentioned before, but there's some fantastic forums out there or Facebook groups where you can buy and sell gear. And this is normally localized. You're able to find one to your local area or county or state. Um, I've used these loads over the years. In fact, when I first joined on GTN and stopped racing, I pretty much sold my whole garage on there. So some people out there got some fantastic deals from me. Um, and this is perfect if you're just hoping to pick up some kit to do your first triathlon, so very basic stuff at very cheap prices, or you wanted to get some new deep section aero wheels. Everything is on them. Um, also, you can be creative and save some money with your commute. So rather than driving to work or getting public transport, why not, if you can, cycle or run to work? So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You're getting your training in on your way to work and back from work, but also saving yourself some money. That's also environmentally friendly. Um, and then race entries. Okay, finally with these, you just don't feel like you need to enter some of those big lavish races that are abroad, some of the Ironman races, for instance. Some of my best race experiences have actually been locally on my doorstep in races that have cost me literally 20 or 30 pounds. So don't feel like you need to spend hundreds or thousands and travel halfway around the world to do some of these races. Some of the best ones are on your doorstep. We're now for the Tri News and we have got a great bit of environmentally friendly news to start off with here because the World Triathlon has just published some guidelines to help organisers and events host more environmentally friendly events. So they now have a panel that will award gold, silver and bronze certifications to events depending on actions that they take. So they've got some must have, some recommended and some aspirational actions and depending on how many of each they hit, events and organisers will be awarded those gold, silver and bronze certifications. So brilliant step forwards towards making events more environmentally friendly and sustainable. Next bit of news though, I'm afraid is slightly less positive. This one comes from the Korean Triathlon Federation. So coach Kim Kyoi Bong and the team captain Yang Yung Yung have been handed life bans by the Korean Triathlon Federation after their teammate Choi Suk Hyung took her own life. Now Choi reportedly endured years of physical and verbal abuse from the coaching staff as part of this semi-professional triathlon team. The 22 year old's death was reported last week and prompted the Korean Triathlon Federation investigation. Um, Kim and Yang have been handed the heaviest punishment and obviously been banned for life. Another athlete involved in the case was banned for 10 years. Um, all denied um, any involvement while te whilst testifying this past week, um, but other athletes in the team have said that they lived through hell. The coach and the captain habitually beat and verbally abused Suk Hyung and the other athletes, according to an anonymous athlete. Um, it is also reported that Choi made um, continual reports and complaints to sporting authorities in the country, but they were ignored. A separate legal investigation has now also been launched by state prosecutors with the possibility of prison sentences for those convicted. Now, amid this global coronavirus pandemic that we're all experiencing at the moment, we did in fact have the track and field events starting this weekend over in Switzerland. But with a slight disclaimer, because rather than them hosting the event as they ordinarily would, this is part of the Evelt Classe, which is quite an iconic athletics meet that's been running for almost 90 years or over 90 years now, they ran it virtually. So they had athletes tuning in from seven different countries and competing virtually, which was absolutely brilliant to watch if anyone tuned in or you can still go back and watch some of the highlights. I would definitely recommend it. But we did have a phenomenal performance in the men's 200 in which Noah Lyles ran an 1890 over 200 meters, beating Usain Bolt's 1919 world record smashing it in fact. 
Well, in actual fact, it did turn out that he started from the wrong line. So he only ran 185 meters. Still an impressive effort, but not quite maybe as impressive as we did first thing. Otherwise though, a fantastic meet and all seemed to go quite smoothly. We did have to wait a couple of minutes for the results to come through after each of them as they compiled all those results. But as I said, I would really recommend having a little search and having a look for that. I think it was named the Inspirational Games. But moving on now, we've got some tech releases because we have the new Garmin Phoenix 6. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this one didn't go unnoticed by many of you out there. So we've got the Garmin Phoenix 6 and the 6S Pro Solar, part of their new solar range. And this features what they call their power glass. And you could probably put two and two together here. Yeah, that power glass has the ability to harness the rays from the sun and power the device. So not only did it actually already have pretty good battery life so on the uh, phoenix 6 pro solar in smartwatch mode it could last up to 14 days indoors outdoors using the solar rays it can last up to 16 days with sufficient solar exposure makes you wonder perhaps we will one day be able to just use a watch without ever needing to charge it again be pretty cool um, it's also worth noting the price for this though $849 may also be why you have heard about this watch um, anyway you can't argue that they're packed full of features um, including I thought this one was pretty cool being able to store around 2,000 Munich music tracks that you can then listen to as you're out cycling or running by using some Bluetooth headphones and finally from me before I pass on over to Heather, I have the winners from our Polar and Zwift giveaway from a couple of weeks ago. I've got quite a few winners here, I think 10, so bear with me here. And hopefully I get all the name pronunciations right. I've got Russell Chiedo, Ryland Hale, Philippa Draper, James Forrester, Mohammed Al Hawaii. Sorry if that's wrong. Michael Mason, Christian Speedle Spidel, Miguel Furtado, Benjamin Ice and Ryan Warnock. Congratulations to all of you. We'll be in touch with you and be pinging those prizes out to you very soon. Now, on over to Heather for the race news. All right, hi guys, I am here with the race news. We just got one this week after a two week hiatus. It's back to the Ironman VR. We're up to number 14 in the series. And this was a 3K run followed by a 40K bike race. And this time it was actually on the new Chattanooga 70.3 bike course, which is a new offering on the Ruby platform. And it was the men who were up first. And I think it's fair to say a surprising win from Denmark's Mickey Mork Taghot in a time of one hour and 53 seconds ahead of Jackson Laundry of Canada, one hour, four minutes, nine seconds. So a good three and a half ish minutes behind there. Um, third was Peter Hemmerich of Belgium, 107.28. And Roman Goyam of France was a 107.35. So, wow, very close for third and fourth there. And on to the women's event, it was won by Meredith Kessler. 109.48, Helen Jenkins back racing. Great to see her, even though it is only virtual racing, still great to see her back for Great Britain and a 111.26 to finish second. Then we had Maureen Hoof um, in 111.37 and Hayley True a bit further back in fourth with a 113.16. Okay, it's picture time when we get to share your photos and we've got a lovely selection. So thank you guys again for sending those in. I'll remind you how you can share yours in a moment. But first up, we have this one from Cal. I think there's some sarcasm here from Shoal Bay, New South Wales, Australia. Um, he describes this as a group of hardy souls swim about three times a week in the ocean as the pools are closed. In fairness, it's a hard life. Conditions are poor. Water is freezing at 19 degrees. It's ugly, really ugly, brutal. Not sure how we do it, frankly. Uh, yeah, that looks rather divine. I think there's definitely some sarcasm going on, but we like it. Uh, Daniel um, is next up with his Canada sign up six at Siberi St. Edmunds. Yeah, this is what we get in the UK. Bit of a contrast, isn't it? He says um, he's Canada from last weekend's ride about Berry St. Edmunds, Suffolk, and a throwback picture. Oh, he's thrown in a second picture here from 2018's Ironman 70.3 Bahrain when you met me. Me the day before the race. Oh, what a nice picture. Thanks for sharing that one, Daniel. That's really cool. It's got me dreaming of sunshine and racing, though. That seems forever ago, doesn't it? Uh, now we have Steph with another beautiful picture, but this one is close to home to us in the UK. It's down at Weymouth. Um, and she says, four friends training for Ironmans. Went away for the weekend in Weymouth and to enjoy some sea swimming. 
First morning, got the pleasure of being joined by an 18-month-old seal. Well, he must be very local if they know he's 18-month-old, unless they're seal specialists. Um, but I'd imagine he's been spotted a few times. Um, not the most productive session, but incredible for the beautiful creature to share. Um, yeah, I would say forget the swimming if you've got a seal to um, have a cuddle with. Although, um, that's pretty brave if you ask me. Love it. Uh, what a great selection this week. Well, if you guys want to give us some joy and share what you're up to at the moment, you can do that using the the uploader which is on screen now we'd love to see your photos it's Capcom time and last week we had this photo of Peter Siddle the former Australian bowler training for his first triathlon and I've got three runners up to share with you and one winner this week our first runner up comes from Philippe Stradisa hey turn off the bubbles I'm swimming here now we've got Landon Cook B3 I should have stuck with bowling David Bannister, this is our final runner-up. Peter Siddle is bowled over by the strengths of the washing machine during his first race. But the winner this week, the winner of our GTN cap, is Maya Riley with the caption, after years of cricket, Peter Siddle is only able to swim using the incredible strength of his bowling arm. Well, congratulations, Maya, get in touch and we will get a cap sent out to you. And this week's picture comes from Ironman Nice 2016 and it's Paul Lunn who was part of the, the um, Zwift Tri Academy last year but this is obviously taken before that um, passing a rather casual spectator you know what to do give it your best shot and share it with us in the comments section below and that brings this week's show to a close there's still a lot to look forward to this week we've got a video on how to improve your handling skills on the aero bars also asking whether you should run listening to music and before you go if you like the look of our run kit as you can see it doesn't have to be worn solely running we've got these t-shirts back in stock they're on the gtn shop so check that out now give us a like if you've enjoyed this and click the icon for the globe to make sure you subscribe to the channel. And before you go, a couple of videos you might like to take a look at. One is the ultimate triathlon shoe. It's made by Mark. That's <laughs> just down here. And our final video we want to share with you is how to treat shin splints. And that's just here.